The next talk is from Pavel about asynchronous multiprocess large model training on PyTorch for synthetic CITES generation. Uh, yeah, Pavel did his PhD in computer science, is an ex lead of data scientists in, a, in the gambling industry in Gibraltar, and is now a research associate for generative modeling at the ZH, uh, the ZH AW, so the University of Applied Science, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At this point, I'm pretty sure everybody of us has heard about large models, especially large language models. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to Paul telling us how to train them with PyTorch. Applause for him. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can hear me? Yeah. It's all good? Good. Yeah. Thank you, Rafael. Uh, so, yeah, uh, maybe when you were looking at this topic, you thought that this is kind of the clickbait, yeah? So, because a lot of uh, words like asynchronous, multiprocess, large model, etc., and this is true. So, today I'm going to show you exactly uh, why I tried to scam you, uh, but also I brought a couple of uh, nice sweets so that you are not scammed that much. Uh, so, uh, as it was said, my name is Pavel, and I'm coming from the Competitor University. So now we are in uh, Ostschweizer Fachhochschule. Uh, I'm from the system of Zürcher uh, Fachhochschule. Uh, but I hope there will be no fight and you would accept me. Uh, so uh, this work was done in collaboration uh, with my master student, uh, Furio Valerio Sordini. Uh, as you can see, he's not here, so only one survived. Uh, this heart was this job done. Yeah, uh, but in fact, he just preferred to go for the business trip to China, and I decided to stay in the best country in the world, yeah, and to continue to the best people. Uh, so mainly, uh, this talk today, I think I have prepared maybe too much of uh, mathematics, but now we're gonna see. Uh, so uh, how many of you uh, have heard or maybe even did something about data science? Ooh, great, 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 great. Okay, so it means uh, for the rest, it's gonna be quite easy, trust me. So you can just ask your neighbor. So that, that, that's not a problem. Uh, so I, I'm gonna to try to explain to you uh, maybe some basic things, and then we're gonna talk about large models. But first, I think we can talk about the synthetic cities because already a couple of people who have seen my name and that's like, by torch, okay, we know synthetic cities. Uh, yeah, it sounds uh, again uh, a, a little bit tricky, but I'm gonna show you what it means. Uh, so, in fact, the idea is that um, you have seen that there are in Switzerland still a lot of the land that is not used, yeah. And I'm really happy that the majority of the land is used for the cows so that they are walking and we can watch them out from the train. Uh, but people also need to live somewhere, yeah? So that's why the new buildings are created, so the new districts are built. And uh, this is, in fact, uh, have this unofficial name like synthetic cities. So it means that, for example, whatever construction company, for example, in Plenia, uh, is uh, having like uh, the new land for the building, and they need to arrange there exactly how the houses, how the roads, how the green zones would be located with respect to each other. Yeah, and this is now the easiest model, and you can see it, for example, on the top right. So this is, uh, I, I think you all know that images, they're like one of the representations of the images is RGB, yeah, like red, green, brown. So we also call it RGB because these are roads, greens, and buildings, yeah? So very easy to remember, and this is how it looks like. Uh, so basically what we are doing, we are uh, like splitting uh, the map of the Switzerland. So there is a lot of open data, luckily, yeah, so as I said, the greatest country in the world. So there is a lot of open source data and also about the urban planning. And there we just uh, cut it into the pieces. Uh, then uh, we get these pieces. We are then, uh, let's say, trying to interpolate uh, the information that we extract with machine learning from the current architecture that exists in Switzerland, yeah? In order to apply it to the new district that's gonna be built because we want to keep Switzerland, let's say, in the same style, yeah? So that's why we are not taking it from Boston, yeah? Or whatever, from where our lovely robot has come, yeah? From Boston. But no, we are getting it from Switzerland. And more precisely, you can do, for example, it from the same canton if you want to get the model uh, that your urban place planning looks like from this canton, and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, the key thing is that in order to do this, uh, we need to a little bit understand how the model works that is, let's say, trying, yeah? So it tries to generate for you the new city. Uh, 
I think, as already was discussed today, everybody heard this uh, term like generative models. Yeah, so generative models, they are truly making some generation. Yeah, so just for those who are not yet much into data science, generation happens uh, with help of, let's say, some randomness in the beginning. So I'm giving you some random noise to the model, and the model says, OK, now I have these initial conditions. Let us generate some city. Yeah? So I'm giving another random noise, random vector. It generates another city, and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, now uh, I want you to see exactly what happens uh, in the case that we have chosen. So we have chosen the stuff that is, in fact, already quite old. So this is like already the granny of the generative models. Uh, so this is called generative adversarial networks. In 2014, it was very novel. So uh, when it was introduced, it was like introduced as the war of the neural networks. So imagine there is this paradigm that is called actor critic. It means that there is one model that is trying to create something. And there is the other model that is trying to distinguish if this stuff created is real or fake. And based on this concept, the training happens. So in fact, like one model is trying to create as good as possible, and the other one is trying to distinguish with the best accuracy as it is possible. So we already had today this um, talk about Matplotlib, yeah? and there was a kid, there was some artist. So imagine that initially, there are these two models, these are like two kids, two kids from Matplotlib, yes, yeah? so or two young Matplotlibs. So then what happens finally is that one kid is trying to draw something, and another kid initially has no idea about what is true picture and what is fake one, yeah, that is drawn by a child. But looking at the examples of real pictures, yeah, in our case, real cities, and looking at what this child is drawing, yeah, he says, okay, there is a great difference between, so this is true, this is fake, yeah? And the other child that is initial one, he's looking at this, he doesn't feel comfortable, yeah? They're like, why this guy is constantly guessing that this is the fake city that I have drawn? I want to start drawing good cities, yeah? And he tries to improve and improve, and the improvement happens because of the mathematics behind, yeah? So uh, here we have represented like two architectures of the uh, networks that we used. So the first one, as I said, it takes uh, like some randomness, yeah? That then from randomness, it tries to generate some city, yeah, some picture. The other one that is below, it is trying exactly to distinguish uh, if it is true or fake. Uh, then, how it happens behind? With a little bit of mathematics, yeah? As a, so, so, so those of you who are, okay, who didn't study at school? Mm -hmm. Good. So, uh, th those of you who did study at school, maybe you remember the lessons of maths. And there was this kind of stuff about some functions, yeah? It was written something like y equals 2x plus 1, for example, yeah? So you, you, you were having such equations. In fact, here we are trying to neural networks. They're trying to solve kind of the equations, yeah? So they have some input. So imagine that we have our image. And as I said, that image can be somehow encoding, for example, the intensity of red, green, blue, yeah, or roads, greens, and buildings. So we encode it, we make it like as a figure, some numbers, yeah, then put it into equation. And let's say the equation for the child who is trying to distinguish, it should give the answer. This equation should give the answer zero in case, for example, this is fake. And it should give the answer one if uh, the picture occurred to be correct here yeah, if it is like the real one. And this happens in order to, now, now the question, yeah, like how to, let's say, find, I say to you, like y equals 2x plus 1, yeah? So I just came with like absolutely randomly, yeah? Y is 2x plus 1, yeah? So let me say that it is ax plus b. And what I'm trying to find, I try to find such a and b that when you plug in x, that is correct one, yeah, that, that is true one. Then I'm gonna get one as the outcome, yeah? If I plug in something that is fake, some bad picture, then it's gonna give me zero. So the question is how to find this A and B. This is the way how to do it, yeah? So this is like the training procedure of deep neural network. So deep neural network, in fact, like, now I think, I have not heard already for a long time this just uh, standard machine learning. Yes, yeah? so everybody's trying to sell deep learning, deep learning. Okay, I'm also going to do this. So deep learning, this is the case when your equation is not just 2x plus 1, but this is 
2x plus 1, then brackets, then multiply by something, plus multiply by something, etc., etc. So many, many layers, yes? So I make my function very much complicated. And this is what happens. And if you remember maybe uh, how you were doing, uh, again, at school, yeah? So you were able to find like the minimums of the functions, yeah? Or the maximum of the functions. I guess for that, you were taking some like gradients, yeah? So here idea is the same. So we are trying to get the gradient, but it occurs that we just not get immediately the answer, but we just understand to which direction we need to go with our a and B, yeah? so like the one that I say about, in order to come to the right function that gives us good answer. So this stuff is called bad propagation. There is a lot of material about bad propagation. You can, for example, uh, get this one that I suggest here and see, uh, still see how it works. But first, I make this multiplication, AX plus B, got the result, and then I'm just getting back the gradient of it and trying to make step towards the right answer. So, basically, uh, this is the stuff uh, that occurred to be very well computed uh, by, uh, let's say, some types of computers. Now we're going to discuss by exactly which type of computers. So, uh, these types of computers, they're going to appear on the right side. Uh, but first, I want to discuss with you exactly what is the problem if I'm telling that just simple maths is required. Yeah, so we are just doing the usual maths. It occurs that some of these models are a little bit too heavy, yes? Yeah? So when I'm telling to you AX plus B, it occurs to be a very simple model. So those of you who exactly know this chat GPT, yeah, maybe so anybody knows how many parameters are there, yeah? How many there are A, B, C, etc. So I can tell you. Exactly, exactly. So billions, billions, yeah, you just feel this word, billions. And uh, the thing is that uh, this stuff during training, it cannot even fit into the memory sometimes. And also, if you are trying to just train and just do all these maps at the same time, yeah, just to get these gradients computations of 60 billions of parameters, then it's going to be extremely inefficient. And when you hear something about inefficient calculation, yeah, I, th I think you, you can hear some smell, yeah? So when you hear about the inefficient and calculation, so, and it is not your neighbor, yeah? So this is exactly the stuff that is called parallelization. Uh, so th this is quite good stuff. And, um, you know, at some point, uh, it occurred to be like a huge boom in the world of deep learning. Yeah, exactly why now deep learning is so much explored. Just because somebody understood, okay, GPUs might be used not only to play games. Yeah, playing games is great. I absolutely adore it. But it occurs that GPUs, they are like having this idea of having small parallel uh, workers. Yes, so CPU is like a huge uh, good worker. Yeah, and GPUs, this is like the... Uh, I'll say the collection of small workers, but you know, like in all these talks that like dad is talking to his child that, you know, look at this, now this stick is broken. Yeah, when you have 10 sticks, you try to break it. No, it doesn't break. This is exactly the principle of GPU. They all together can make some very nice calculation because they do it in parallel. Yeah, because they can exactly parallelize the work and do it. So. That's why GPUs occur to be absolutely acceptable for the training of deep learning models. And now first, I'm going to tell you what can do rich people in the case of the large models, yeah? So imagine that you are rich. Imagine that you either have a great grant or you were able to get, for example, several GPUs somehow on, I don't know, vast.ai or wherever, and uh, you are trying to train your model with such a framework that is called PyTorch. Yeah? So PyTorch, I, I, I'm not paid for the PyTorch, uh, so I, I just really like it. Uh, so they have this collaboration with the NVIDIA, with CUDA, and uh, they have the automatic processing of the uh, workers on GPU. So if you want, for example, you decided to train your own chat GPT, yeah? let's imagine yeah? <laughs> that for some reason you got a lot of money. So uh, you, you just need to get this PyTorch uh, to the variables that you have. You make dot CUDA and that's it. So it's going to immediately increase the speed of your training because it's going to be then parallelized. But let's now discuss what to do if you have several GPUs. 
So this is the stuff that I can make a little spoiler. I don't have it. So I have come here to make this talk, and next several slides would be about the stuff that I have never done in my life. So that I know only how it works theoretically, because like all the grunt went on this suit, and uh, that, that, that's it. Uh, so. Uh, the, the first uh, absolutely natural idea is that if you have several training data, so as I was saying, yes, so for example, we have several pictures. What you can do, you can just parallelize the data itself. Yeah, You can say, okay, this GPU gonna train this particular bu bunch of data. This GPU gonna train on this particular bunch of data. And after they make some training, yeah, after they make this iteration of like, walking to, towards the gradient with the best direction, then at some point they can be synchronized. So this stuff is done there with uh, such a code all reduce. So like imagine there are several workers, they are working on different subsets of data, and then finally they are synchronized in some time, then they get the replica of the current state of the model, and they again, each of them walk uh, into different directions, yeah? Then they aggregate their direction, so this guy says go to the north, this go guy goes here, and this guy goes here. The, Average is there. Okay, we go there. Yeah, and uh, th this is how this process works. And this is the most naive idea. Uh, the second idea is to make not the data parallelization, but let's imagine we have model as we, we already discussed here, billions of parameters. Then let's train half of them on one GPU, half of them on another GPU. Why not to do it? It occurred that if I just take one subsample of parameters and start training them, then what I'm going to do with the rest, yeah? Because they still going to need to wait up until these guys get some update, yeah? So uh, th this is the problem of this such a called vertical cut. So um, I'm not going to stop a lot on the pipeline parallelism, the one that in the bottom, but this one solves this problem a little bit by uh, cutting uh, this problem into sub batches. But what I would recommend you to do, is to do the horizontal cut if you want to do it. So horizontal cut is exactly the idea that, uh, look at this picture, might be a little bit complicated for those who do not do maps daily, but imagine that these lines, these are exactly, let's say, the paths, how I can go from initial input, so I have only two inputs, x1 and x2, and I need to go to the final, yeah? So imagine there is like the red road, and there are like the possibilities of going with the uh, blue road. So these are uh, two different ways of updating, yeah? So how I can update uh, these uh, parameters. So I can update X2 if I go with, uh, for example, blue road, X1 with the red road. And that's why I can make like horizontal cut. I say, okay, now X1 is gonna be trained on one GPU, X2 gonna be trained on uh, another GPU. Then again, I'm gonna synchronize them. So here it's already called the reduced scatter method. And that's it. So it occurs that just the basic ideas are to make either the vertical cut or the horizontal cut or the data uh, parallelization. There are many more methods for the rich people. So here I would just uh, provide for you the names. So for example, this first one, zero redundancy optimizer, me myself have never used it. This uh, fully shared data parallel, this one I have used, and as long as you are smart guys, I just provide for you the schema that you understand how it works. Uh, but if uh, to not going into details, just all the further ideas, they are based on the combinations of those that I have told you about. So this is just exactly the combination of either data parallelization or model parallelization, and then depending on how to do it. So basically, uh, I think you were waiting for this moment because we were talking about rich people, yeah? Now let's talk about us. So like what we can do in these terms. Uh, and I mean, as long as this is Py Python conference, yeah, I'm sorry, just this is the first slide with Python code uh, and the last one. Uh, so uh, here mm, uh, I'm talking about the old good multiprocessing. And here is the point that I want to highlight. That, of course, PyTorch is making a lot of money on collaboration with NVIDIA. NVIDIA is making a lot of stuff there. But the secret is that you can run even large language models on your usual CPU. You can even uptrain it if you want. So now I'm going to tell you hi. Uh, the, the thing is that, for example, if you look for what are the conditions for running 
ChatGPT, yeah? it's going to tell you that you should have like 16 cores and 64 gigabytes of RAM. So I would say this is the stuff that we can allow. Yeah, so it's, it's not yet something absolutely impossible. And then the thing is that PyTorch, yeah, uh, th this is the stuff that it doesn't put on the first page. This is already like, I don't know, 10th page or whatever. First, first nine pages there about NVIDIA, yeah, about how to do it all on GPUs. Uh, so the thing is that if you are not training these 60 billion parameters, yeah? If you just, for example, need to uh, get some fine tuning or if you just uh, need, need to make the, uh, s some little stuff, it would fit into your CPU. And with CPU, you can even make it uh, with help of uh, how it is set here in the code. So uh, you just need to make model.share memory. Uh, and uh, for example, in our case, now this is the second insight that I'm going to tell you that if you have the competitive models, like we have, for example, the generator and discriminator, you can put them both. You can make generator.share memory, then discriminator.share memory, and then they're going to be already trained in parallel each having the shared version of the other model. So they're going to be trained in parallel with the same manner as I have explained to you before on CUDA. So they're going to have the replicas of each other at some timeline. Then they're going to train, 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 and then they're going to synchronize again, train to train, synchronize. And that's it. So uh, most of the models that you have, they can be trained there. And uh, one more thing that if you want, if you are, uh, let's say, no, no, somewhere in the middle between rich and poor, uh, and for example, you have one GPU, then your subprocess can be executed on GPU. This is absolutely uh, fine to be done. So now. This is just for you to remember uh, that uh, our, our little summary of the advice, yeah? What, what and when you should do. So I would say that uh, the main preferable stuff for me is like the top, top right, yeah? So normal use, normal use of multiprocessing. The, the, this is good stuff. This occurs to be absolutely enough for the majority of the researchers. Yeah, if you uh, want to try something else, yeah, then, then you can try like either pipeline parallelism, uh, tensor parallelism, the data parallelism, whatever. So, uh, proceeding to the results uh, that we had. Uh, so, here, uh, you might wonder, uh, what is this on the left? Uh, so, I have tried to make it this way that you cannot understand if our model works well or not. Uh, so, uh, th these are uh, different, in fact, cities. Uh, we have generated different cities. And there, uh, we, if, 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 what, what we have done, imagine we have taken two random noises in the space and we have generated the stuff between. So I mean that imagine that you have like, I don't know, some 0 0.1, here you have 0 0.9, then in between you have taken dots, yeah? You have input to the generator, and it generates the stuff from left to right, yeah? And you see how at least smoothly it uh, changes, yeah? And uh, the major thing is that uh, it keeps the structure of the roads. Uh, it is quite good. Uh, and it has only 32 million parameters, if I calculated it correctly. So we did it on uh, CPU, we did it quite well, we tried it with multiprocessing, it was even a bit faster when we have trained it with traditional training, so we were absolutely happy with this. So, uh, as long as I'm uh, soon out of time, uh, let me make uh, one uh, little step aside. So, because today we talked about CPython already, yeah? We talked already about the data types. Now I talked about multiprocessing. So I just don't know how it is in Python community, but in data science community, now there is a huge hype in, in academic data science community about a new language called Mojo. So now everybody uh, in, the, in the data science community is waiting for like Mojo to be fully released saying because it has the typing as in Java. It has, uh, it, it has solved the problem of global interpreter lock, yeah? So it has like the full collaboration with Matplotlib, et cetera. So, uh, I mean, this is not the propaganda. This is what I want to highlight. This is just that we need to know the enemy, yeah? We need to know what happens around us so that uh, uh, j just, I suggest to keep an eye on these guys, yeah, and uh, try to not allow them to uh, conquer us. So, this is basically uh, all that I wanted to say. Uh, thank you. So, uh, these are uh, these two guys. The one that you don't see on the left is in China. Uh, the one on the right is me. Uh, please feel free to contact me if you are fascinated about uh, any 
uh, stuff uh, in the science. And yeah, uh, please, uh, now it's time for questions, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. So I see a question over here already. Oh, where are the microphones? Back there. Here, in front. Hey, thanks, Pavel. Uh, question, what GPU did you use to actually train your model? Was it an RTX or a GTX? Uh, OK, uh, so uh, in fact, it was, uh, uh, I think it was GTX, uh, yes. Uh, and uh, the, the thing is that we have tried, uh, this is also important uh, to confess, yeah, that without, just without GPU, it trains much slower than with GPU, yeah, because GPU itself uh, accelerates. But when we tried to train it with multiprocessing and just with GPU, then it were to be absolutely comparable. So this is quite important. Okay. All right. Are there more questions? No more questions. Okay. Ah. Uh, can you show the slide again with the vertical slide? The vertical slide? The vertical the cut or cut? Yeah. The vertical cut. Yes, sure. Uh, no, uh, once more. I uh, once the last one that you just saw. So it was the horizontal cut. Horizontal. Yeah. Oh, horizontal. Yeah. And I'm I'm yeah. I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, is it the parallelism happens at the forward pad and backward pad? Yes. 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 Sure. Exactly. So I, I mean again. So you are getting you are getting uh, the replicas, yeah, of the states of the attributes that you have your parameters, yeah, and then you are uh, feed forwarding the stuff, yeah, and then you are just uh, calculating uh, then the gradient. Uh, so I mean because you are always feed forwarding for the for some replica of the other parameter in these terms. So that's why feed forwarding they are coming separately, yeah, and then backwards is also coming separately. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. So, any, yeah, please. Feel free to ask any question about deep learning, whatever stuff. Let's just I'm, I'm just really curious where is going, is uh, AI generated Dorf going to be built? <laughs> <laughs> So, so uh, basically, you're asking when this project is going to be successful, yeah? Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, no, uh, the, the thing is that uh, now, now we have already, so we, we got some uh, good results in these terms, and now we have uh, submitted it as a result of the paper, and uh, we, as soon as it's going to be accepted or rejected, I don't know, uh, then we're going to release the code. Uh, I mean, it's going to be not the codes that write me and ask. Uh, no, no. I mean, I mean that uh, I think we're going to for sure put it uh, out, out way. Uh, but uh, meanwhile, I cannot share it because no good documentation is provided here. So you know how important it is. Uh, so yeah, th th that's why. Yeah, a little bit later. But the main thing that we want to do is to make a web framework. Yeah, that's going to be in fact uh, making the prediction. You know, there is such a website that is called uh, this person does not exist. Uh, com. So if 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 nobody know if somebody doesn't know, try it out. This is very uh, fancy website. So you just open it, and every time you refresh a page, it appears the face of a new person generated which does not exist. So in fact, this is what we want also to make, like as the final step of the current uh, stage, is to make this uh, this uh, Swiss city does not exist. Uh, it's a hub. Yeah. So uh, then, uh, search for this website. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are there other questions? Okay, cool. So I personally was wondering, why is it only NVIDIA playing uh, uh, in the data science room or is it like AMD sleeping or? So, so the thing is that NVIDIA just was the one who suggests it is collaboration. And that's why, I mean, for example, Google last year, it uh, has been defeated. So PyTorch is the stuff that is provided by Facebook. So there is another concurrent uh, framework that is called TenderFlow. Uh, it is provided by Google, but uh, last spring they announced that they would uh, stop developing it. Uh, so simply because they uh, confessed that they cannot ca compete with PyTorch. And now PyTorch, let's say, is almost the monopolist in some sense on the market. And it has this collaboration with NVIDIA and they continue developing now new products together. So that's why I think we would not be able to get rid of it. NVIDIA if we want to continue with this, yes. But don't give the money, you CPU. <laughs> All right, are there other questions in the room? 
I don't see any hands. So uh, one last question then. Or, yes, please. Uh, uh, thank you for your talk. I was just wondering while training the model, did you take, took into account in the data that the data is like man-made and maybe suboptimal in terms of roads or to, to less living space and stuff? So to optimize and like challenge, uh, overcome challenges like to, to less living space and okay. stuff? Okay, uh, this is fair, a fair question. This is now the stuff that uh, we already committed to do for uh, with the company uh, is about, uh, you know, there is another point that there are generative uh, models and there are conditional generative models. So when you are given some conditions. So this is the stuff that we have included into this stage. When we put as an input additionally, not only noise, but also the percentage of greens, roads, and buildings. And then the picture is generated just exactly what is the percentage. So yeah, absolutely. Because there are business areas, there are family living areas, yes, so there are different conditions. So for sure, yeah, it should be done. So I think this was the last question. Yeah, uh, we, we, can, we can then talk uh, if you want. In the social yeah, event yeah, after. Uh, or, just yeah. meet me somewhere. I won't be able to demonstrate you a new synthetic city, but still, I'm <laughs> going to be able to answer some questions. Okay, thank you guys. Okay. Thank you. Thanks.